Hello and welcome to Teaching My Cat to Read, the very serious book review podcast. I'm Eli. I'm Em. And I'm Lottie. And this week we're discussing everything about the inimitable Jeeves by PJ Woodhouse. of an episode like name and like author title it's, it's just, like his name and the book title as a dyslexic i'm just no inimitable 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 just throw some syllables in there it'll be fine i'm sure there's a, like another dyslexic reading listening to this he's like yes i, I feel your pain also, like, I feel like the Wodehouse thing, or the Wodehouse, it, I've always said Wodehouse because that's how it's spelled. And my brain is going, something went f***y with the great vowel shift there, right? Oh, boy. Do we want to talk about the great vowel shift? We can get my spouse on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Special God. linguistics um, episode, and it's just we let Tristan loose on the mic for like an hour. <laughs> yes. I th- I th- we'll add it, we'll add it. Another bonus episode. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think also we sh- as as this is our first episode of like full episode of series three. Dun, Hello, dun, welcome dun, if you're new. We're a book podcast. We do funny bits about books. We have a cat. It's great fun. It's a good time. We discuss one book roughly an episode. And for for those of you who are um, already familiar, here is our news. Lottie has a house. Yeah. Eli has a new job, and I have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> Lottie also has a cold. I also have a cold. I'm I'm currently cradling the hot water bottle like a small child to make sure that <laughs> the dear listeners don't have to listen to me sounding like I'm coughing a lot. Like someone put Play-Doh up your nose or something. Yeah, basically. You know? Like nobody needs to hear that. Shall we shall we do like a brief overview of this book slash the characters and I guess context for if you haven't heard about this before i don't know how you summarize it because there's too much there's too much going on and yet all of it is kind of the same story yes yeah the the same the story is bertie worcester is this sort of feckless layabout with family money who does he just wants to what is in one in this book he says oh i want a quiet life i just want like to eat three square meals a day toddle around london with some chums and like not have to worry about anything ever and like Hard same. Um, and this is, these books are his quest to do that and people yeah. getting in his way. And honestly, you yeah. know, I respect that from him. I respect yeah. that as a life goal that he's yeah. trying to achieve. Mm. Um, but yes, it, it's, every short story is something has happened to disrupt his very quiet life, like an aunt has appeared or somebody wants to marry him or his best friend wants to get married. And every time His he, best friend's fallen in love again. Yeah. And um, yeah. Somehow this devolves into a chaotic situation that only the genius of his his well, it's not he's not a butler because a butler's in charge of other servants. It's his valet, valet, yeah, his valet. Yeah, yeah, his valet. Yeah. Only Jeeves can solve it his with dude, his yeah. sort his of his wit and also not being posh like everyone else and therefore having like access to ideas <laughs> yeah you know having like thoughts and practical skills <laughs> like there's there's a couple times when it's just that he knows the serving he knows he knows the staff at the other household of whatever soup bertie's yeah. got himself into and mm, he just yeah. has a quiet word with somebody and fixes everything behind the scenes mm. yeah. I, I feel like also one of the i mean one i listened to the audiobook of this and mm. i did not realize that i i found it really difficult to get into this if i'm being completely honest mm. but i think the reason i, did, I found it difficult is because i didn't realize it was a collection of short stories oh, and so they yeah, are that would be really confusing connected by their characters so like his friend bingo little mm. like turns up quite a lot um usually like falling in love with some random waitress he's just and met. i would say friend in kind of heavy square scare quotes yeah. because he <laughs> yeah. does not he is he is not kind to bertie he's mm. not he he's I, I was actually gonna say that he's not he's not a very nice person I think there's a conversation at the end where he's like, he's bingo. It's like one of the last stories and bingo's asking Bertie for yet another outrageous favor. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I've, we've known each other for 15 years. Um, what was it? We were and at Bertie's school. Bertie's like, yes, it'll take me the rest of my life to live it to down. Live it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We were at school together. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> And Which by the end so of that story, funny. that that exchange has happened so many times that it gets cut down to, you know, we were at school together. And Bertie just goes, yeah, all right. <laughs> like, Bertie is mm. very silly, but actually yeah. he is the person in this whole thing, apart from Jeeves, that mm. I would want to be friends with. He's, yeah. Really yeah. Not, he's really not bad at all. Again, yeah. he just wants the quiet life. He's the most harmless example of the type that has ever, he, he ever is, walked he the is fictional He is existing, earth. like, through the sort of haphazard 
escapades mm. I, f- I feel is for want yeah. of a better word but um we, we also we need to do a terrible summary guys what's oh, your gosh. terrible summary because um, i i would say jeeves the butler with a google for a brain <laughs> yeah i just think of that um i don't know if it was a tweet or if it was a tumblr post about being a cat owner and being as jeeves to your cat when your cat gets its claw stuck in something and you're like gently <laughs> detaching the cat and going yes yes very good sir <laughs> you know you are like you're following around this little creature who thinks that it is the god of its own universe mm. and just uh, making sure that it doesn't hurt itself too badly and that <laughs> is what jeeves is to worcester in these books no so i had um grown man fights bravely to be allowed to wear <laughs> color fails dismally because this is the thing is the thing i realized about these stories when we uh, finally having got round to them was that every single one you could just the actual story is what can Worcester get away with wearing before Jeeves, like, finds it and kills it, right? <laughs> and, like, the thing is that that's, that's the only thing that seems to matter to either of them either. That's, like, the order is restored to the universe. We're complaining about it, the clothes again. Um, and the it's thing like is every could- time there's a story and Bertie is like, I've got myself into a spot of bother, don't you know? Mm. And however there had been some chilliness in the home recently and I was like, okay, what ludicrous item of clothing has <laughs> yeah. Bertie taken up? this time and it's like yeah. there's a bright red cummerbund there's some purple socks which i'm gonna have some purple sock yarn left over after the jumper that i'm currently knitting and nice. you know i'm gonna make myself some ludicrous purple socks <laughs> do it, do it, do um it, and it. then there's these jazz spats which i don't even know quite what they are but no. he but like they're not they're supposed to be in sort of white or gray some sort of like mm. neutral tone and bertie's managed to find some in eaton colors mm. and jeeves hates them and the end of that story is bertie very manfully going okay well jeeves has saved my ass once again i need to give something up to him and i know he hates these spats and he says uh jeeves mm. you may take them and burn them and jeeves goes i already did before breakfast this morning sir very good sir <laughs> Yeah, when I was yeah. like, Jesus, my new favorite character in anything ever. <laughs> yeah, basically. But I, yeah, I was just, I love the um, the feeling that any other story you could think of in the whole world could be going on in the background. And, <laughs> and they, would, they would and still be, like, t- the, the whole point for the, uh, both of them, the most important thing would be the argument about the clothes. Like, it could be a post-apocalyptic zombie wasteland you know, it's like zombie Aunt Agatha has come to try and get him to marry the vampire queen or whatever. And um, like, and it's about the- this gas mask that he's found that's decorated yeah. garishly <laughs> and Jeeves doesn't want him to wear it. Yeah, You can't be looking gauche in the wasteland, sir. And like, they'd still, the most important thing would be Jeeves being like, oh, you can't double denim in an apocalyptic wasteland. Be serious, mm. sir. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> standards. <laughs> But Jeeves like very rarely ventures an opinion. Anyway, mm. one of the things I, f- I I I quite liked about the audiobook is because the the book itself is written in first person. Mm. Like the, the guy doing the audiobook had that RP mm. upper class oh, voice. You've got to. You've it got basically to. sounded like you were having this sort of one sided conversation with mm. with with Bertie, and yeah. he was saying about all of these things and. And, and what Jeeves it's a very said conversational and... tone isn't it yeah, it is it, very it's much very, like very... you sat down with him in a pub and he's telling you this story kind of yeah. thing yeah his character is so clear in that writing mm. um, and I love it and yeah. I think it, that the humour came through when I realised it was just like I googled it and I was like mm. what, what was going on I was like oh it's interconnected short stories okay that makes mm. a heck of a lot more sense now yeah. mm-hmm. i think the humor came through a lot more for me like mm. a, lot, a lot easier because i kind of got oh okay it it was it was originally published in magazines for the short stories so mm. and then they were like put together in this in this collection that yeah mainly focuses around his friend who's useless bingo little which is what a name <laughs> oh absolutely i mean the names in this book are f- fabulous the, they, uh, they bassington all- bassington <laughs> the Bassingdon Bassingdon of the Bassingdon Bassingdons. And the thing is, is if I think the beauty of the names are is they exist in yeah. the real world. Oh, yeah. You have met a Bassington Bassington. Mm. If if you've gone if you've gone to Cambridge, right? You've met people like the Digby Smythes of Di- mm. of of the the Westchester Digby Smythes or whatever. Westchester's in New York, actually. I don't know why I said that, but um, <laughs> you know, it's a perfect skewering of mm. that class mm. of 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 Englishness, a sort of 90, late nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. And you kind of assume they don't exist anymore, but they really, really do. Yeah, like. it, it kind of. I guess a lot of people sort of. Po- I say pop culture reference point for this because mm. say be Downton. So when we when mm. we're mm. upper class would be less than Downton. So you've got money, you've mm. been to Eton, but you're not 
land you're not so yes upper mm. upper upper class that you have mm. all this wealth and like land so mm. in 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 mm. this case i think and correct me if i'm wrong bingo's he's inherited wealth so he's yeah. got well, money he has none of his own it's he lives on an allowance from his uncle yeah. who later yeah. becomes a peer which is that whole thing about like the children of um rich people rich people aren't rich in their own right they're um clients yeah. who can be cut loose at any time thing. yeah yeah whereas bertie is independently wealthy so yes. yeah. he, he listens to Aunt Agatha not because she's going to cut him off, but mm. because he's so afraid of her, which I think <laughs> that's an extra layer of which, which I love to because it. it's kind mm. of it, it's quite an amusing concept that you know he has his own agency in, in yeah. some respects, whereas his friend doesn't. He has his friend mm. just gets an allowance from his uncle, and that's mm. it. And so although he has his wealth, he doesn't have the agency to, mm. for want of a better word. But Bingo's just like excuse my French. Idiot, <laughs> and it, and especially the one with like the um, Bingo becomes a communist. Well, I think, I think <laughs> that one I get, loved. That that was yeah, that that was that was funny. He, he had he, and Bingo like he joins he joins the um troop, doesn't he? He becomes a, he joins the Sons of the Red Dawn, which yeah. is a Marxist like cell, <laughs> and because he's fallen in love with, he met on the top of a bus and fell in love with the daughter of one of the ringleaders of this Marxist cell, and he goes. Obviously, the way to win her heart is to get a fake beard and to join them as a Marxist revolutionary. Yeah. Uh, which, you know... Uh, 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 uh. Who among us has not accidentally joined a Marxist society in order to impress a cute girl? Like, mm. that is... Mm. I joined the science fiction society and now we're married, so I'm doing better than Bingo Little, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I tell you what, I think the um, the twins, Claude and Eustace, they, mm. oh on, on the one hand, they annoyed me because they kept harassing that poor young woman. Mm. But, like, also that they they all ended up at the... Like they were so bored of stuff to do in London. I think it kind of annoyed me because at this, mm. at the, at the for for reference, there's a cost of living crisis. So it's kind of listening to this book kind of annoyed. This it's a bad, it's a bad timing. Yeah, <laughs> they had, they had, they they had so little to do. They went to mm. the country house and this, and they put bets on like the length mm. of the sermon of the new yeah. like preacher guy. <laughs> and then I love it here. I was just looking down at them, like, another mm. excellent name. It just says. At Twing Hall, Bertie, Bingo and Bertie's cousins, Claude and Eustace, bet on a race involving the lengths of local parson sermons. Is Twing Hall actually a place? Oh, I've got yeah. to Google this now. Mm-hmm. Google, but the best bit is like, concurrently, Bingo is in love with Cynthia Wickhammersley. And I'm like, that is, what a name. You know, if, 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 it's sort of oh, every that's, time. That's like a real name though. Like, there are I know, I know it's a real name, but like, it, I'm it's sure. a... It's a uh, just outrageous. It, really, it's one of those. It? It's one of those words where you hear the surname, you hear people's mm. surnames, and you mm. and it's just this. Um, I don't know the length yeah. of it, the, the number of consonants, <laughs> the number of you know. It's made up of. It's not you know Smith, is yeah. it? It's not like Cynthia yeah. Smith. Like yeah. it, it's not you know Cynthia Clockmaker. The, the, who was a clockmaker? <laughs> you, you know, or like a, a, a name clockmaker. that is. You can see where it's come from. I, I guess Wick Hammersley would be a place, right? That's the kind of yeah. shape yeah. of name that it is. But I guess compare this to like polite society in Austin times, right? Where you go and call on people and you you sort of meet people. And I guess the marriage stuff is a little less structured mm-hmm. um, in terms of like. Like who you can and can't marry but you do still see shades of like well well bingo will be cut off if he marries a waitress until yeah. they manage to convince his uncle that bertie is actually the author of a series of uh, sort of pop romance books <laughs> which is of course a complete lie and that well i comes unraveled later when the next waitress that bingo wants to marry is T- wants to marry turns out to actually be that author <laughs> um, which was which is I did a not beautiful see it coming, twist and it, it was so funny I enjoyed funny. it immensely well because the thing is yeah. by that point you've forgotten about the waitress and you've forgotten about exactly. the whole gaff about the because they've, there's so many terrible cons that they've attempted to run to get Bingo mm. Little the, the object of his heart's his current object of his heart's desire which usually involves convincing his uncle to give him back his allowance which he's lost for being a cad of some sort or other in the but interim but he, he's normally mm. like he's trying to get his allowance back from his uncle by being mm. a detective or something I I, I, I think there was I think, mm. oh, oh, yeah, am I conflating? No, 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 there is one. There is at least one where he's like pretends to be 
Oh, it's the Claude and Eustace thing when they're because one of them robs him to like um, impress this oh, girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, that poor girl. They meet this actor. They meet this actress, and they both fall obviously fall in love with her immediately because she's probably mm. the first interesting person that they've met in ages because they spend the rest of their life at Oxford. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, to be clear, I'm saying this from a position of Oxbridge sucks, not I went to Cambridge and Oxford sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh and they both fall in love with her and then yeah they do various ludicrous and horrible things to try and impress her mm. um which is what you were saying lottie about them harassing this poor woman because that's really yeah. what happens is they just beset her like mm. besiege her what what i love is though is how 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 jeeves solves that problem it's so funny <laughs> it's by telling them both that she's gone to south africa and so she'll the, meet the, them the, there <laughs> the and so they both leave <laughs> <laughs> the premise is that these two have come to roost in, in Bertie's flat in London um, mm. and he is supposed to shepherd them onto a ship to South Africa where they're basically being exiled from polite society for being too awful by their family. <laughs> and, you know, they're being sent off to the colonies because it will do them good. And, of course, Bertie utterly fails to get them onto the boat. Mm. And they're just hanging around his place eating his food you know and they're not uh, eating his like food breaking his, his things beds, they're not even going to take noisy. him on a magical quest to go and kill a dragon at the end of it or anything <laughs> and um and jesus is just like i know how to get them out of the house i will tell them i will give them a reason that they want to go to south africa instead and of course it's a complete lie mm. um yeah this, and Bertie thinks just... he solved it himself and he hasn't <laughs> it's jesus <just, laughs> it's so funny because they're like the, the, you keep getting further through the steps of the explanation and, and Bertie's like, oh man, you've sent them to South Africa? Amazing. But surely they'll notice that she's not on board. And he's like, ah, oh, well, she told them that she'd be joining the ship at Madeira. She'd go overland until then. And he's like, and when's the next stop off the ship? Oh, there isn't one, sir. Oh, so they will be stuck. Oh, do you know, and he's like, you know, the only thing that can make this better is if they were, you know, I, I, like, if they had to see each other. At this point, they're not on speaking terms because they've both been chasing after the same woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ben's like, oh, it's such a shame though. It's probably such a big ship. I bet they won't even run into each other. And uh, Jeeves is like, ah, well, I've thought of this, sir. And actually, I booked them the same cabin. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is just like this yeah. is amazing i love you yeah. it's just it's just so um like slightly petty but like to mm. the extent that jeeves sort of mm. i don't know it's just the le- level of pettiness and the level yeah. of sort of chaotic good yeah that he's yeah, doing. so rarely like ventures an opinion of his own but you mm. know exactly what he's meaning to say every time because bertie will translate it for you the reader yeah um, he's like oh i knew jeeves was in a terrible snit about my old etonian jazz chaps or whatever they were called <laughs> uh, jazz spats that's it and oh a spats a kind of shoe i don't know oh, anyway maybe. um doesn't it really doesn't matter <laughs> um <laughs> but bertie will translate for you what jeeves is thinking and doing and it's funny because sometimes he will do that and sometimes he has no clue because he's so stupid. It's delightful. Yeah. Well, also, the, 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 when the communists come to tea and, um, <laughs> and, and, and uh, Worcester's like, I could tell that Jeeves was upset because he paled very slightly and like I saw him grip the table and it's like the most upset I've ever seen him in his whole life. <laughs> and, it's just like, and it's like micro expressions. It's like Wei Wushan reading Lan Wang Ji's face. He's just like, oh God. <laughs> I tell you, Gothmog saw me more upset than that today because there was a slug under her snack bowl when I went to go and give her her soup. We've, oh got, a slu- we've got a slug problem in this house. It's not that, good. That is not good. That is this not is good. the first time we've had any of us have actually seen the slug, I think. And I obviously, you know, picked it up and took it outside and I was yelling the whole time because, you know, the horrors. And uh, anyway. Um, I could hear you coming I, I out the front say. of the house. I could, like, I could trace your passage by the sound <laughs> of the yelling. It was very funny. I said to Tristan, I was like, I said, I said to the spouse, I was like, I'm just going to be yelling while I do this and there's nothing that can change that anyway but um the idea that like thinking of these books as as mm. worcester as the sort of cat that's just going mm. about its life and causing havoc mm. and jeeves as the as the the human that's providing the home yeah but but there are there are cats in one of the short stories doesn't she, doesn't he gain yes. some cats so there yes. are the, the, cats in this the book. twins have them for a prank and it all coalesces perfectly to get Bertie out of an engagement that he doesn't want to be in oh yeah because mm. it's, it's it's just it's, um... you know this contrived coincidence that Jeeves has managed to pull together um to convince the father of the woman that he's actually a raving lunatic um 
It's good. It's a good time. I, I really, I do really enjoy that because it, I, sometimes I'm, I, I must admit, I am Worcester in a lot of these scenarios. I am Bertie <laughs> level smart. I'm like, I, I have no idea how Jeeves is going to solve it until he does. And then still I'm kind of lost. Like, I'm not convinced I know exactly what happened for half of this. There you were know, lots very of stories that story. end with like Worcester being like, oh, well, that all shook out wonderfully. And like, and then I toddled off to bed. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so funny. They're really well pitched. Like, because you mm. can, because you, the reader, can always know exactly what's happened. Yeah. And, and appreciate the elegance of Jeeves's m- machinations. Yeah. But Bertie just doesn't. And that adds an extra layer of humour to it, to me. And I was thinking about them as, as escapism earlier, because the thing is, there aren't really any stakes. Like, yeah. He's independently wealthy, so he's never yeah. actually going to lose his livelihood. He doesn't want anything from life except to like not get married, eat good food, and like go to musicals occasionally. Well, we say not get married. The thing is that he already is married. He is already to married Jeeves. to Jeeves, and we will get to that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but like the stakes are so low. You know, it's always like, oh, um, somebody's gonna wants to get married, or. Um, Somebody else wants to get married. Somebody else um, wants to impress a girl. Somebody else wants to win a bet. All of th- somebody mm-hmm. else wants to get on a boat to South Africa to chase an actress. No one is ever at real risk of harm, you know. Yeah, and like mm. Bertie himself is so genuinely and actively harmless. Like yes. that it all and and then yeah, I think the other thing is that they're all problems caused by his ability to not like his inability to say no to people. Oh, he needs to grow a spine like yesterday. Yeah. So like, and so the fact is that you kind of, even if Jeeves hadn't solved it, you know that he could if if Bertie had just gone no and walked out of literally every single one of these stories. Like there wouldn't be a story, but also he'd be yes. fine. You know, yes. so there's just the stakes are non-existent. It's literally just Bertie Worcester has a quiet life. You know, yeah. Mm. Um, and I think that's really that was I honestly that was quite refreshing to me. I think in some. Mm. In some cases, I, I think there's probably times I'd read it and I'd find that annoying. But uh, like recently, I was just like, yeah, you know what? That's exactly this what this is. This is a fun they're, little sort of... Yeah, they're compelling wallet. enough. They're compelling enough without me needing to feel like anything mm. about it except likely amused. And I love you know? the language. Like, yes, it's like, oh, I've got so myself funny. into the soup. Oh, well, this is a spot of... Like, I'm not, giving, I'm not doing it justice. It's so funny. I have started saying I've gotten myself into the soup. It's been yeah, like yeah. a week since I finished reading this and I'm like, it, the, the language has infected me. Also, I love how often he calls things fruity. I know it doesn't yes. mean the same thing. I know it doesn't mean the same thing, but also, yeah, every, mm-hmm. everybody's me old fruit and I, I appreciate that. Um, yep. It's a rather fruity tie, you know, all of this. It's great. Yep. Well, um, so had you guys heard of these books before before reading this one? Like kind of what was your influence from i guess a pop culture perspective because there is an adaptation there's quite a famous adaptation with fry and laurie mm. who who adapted this series of books have you have you seen that adaptation because i personally haven't i've seen a couple of them no since like on youtube but i haven't I've seen, seen bits and full... pieces yeah yeah no, I, i've I never sat down and watched it i think of them almost in the same category as the jeremy brett sherlock holmes in that they're like this long running series adaptations mm. done quite done quite well obviously completely different kind of genre yeah um it's reading the books I'd always meant to get around to and had never mm. had somebody kick me into doing so, which is one of the reasons I love doing this podcast. So I think yeah. my yeah. first direct experience of these was actually a fanfic that was a crossover with Jonathan Strange oh, oh, that's and Mr. So Norrell. Good for that. Um, oh my goodness, you can just drop Reeve and Worcester into any setting. Well, so I've read a lot of crossovers with them in KJ Charles novels, actually, and that's a lot of fun. But um, yeah, the first one I ever read was... I want to say it's an A. Marguerite. It sounds like an A. Marguerite premise. But um, at the end of, not to spoil Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Actually, no, I don't have mm. to. Hold on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's a, there, is a, there is a gentleman with thistle down hair in Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell who steals people away to um, dance, the dance, uh, dance eternal in a very creepy castle. Um, oh, of course this is going to happen to Worcester. And they, can't, and they can't tell anyone about it. So every night they're like dancing their shoes to shreds. Um, they never get any sleep. Um, all of this. Mm, yeah. And basically, Bertie, by means of, again, not saying no to people, ends up getting a mm-hmm. spell cast on him that draws the attention of the gentleman with the thistle down hair. Now, yeah. this, the J- Jonathan Stranger Mr. Norrell is set like 100 years before yeah. Jeeves and Worcester, so he's also gone back in time. But is this entity timeless, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought he was. 
well, from what I remember, have gotten up to. So it's it's entirely plausible that he's still around to bother Worcester a hundred years later. Oh yeah, no, but it, it's not. So that's not actually what happening. It is like there is a time travel element. Like there's ah, a gotcha. there's a whole thing going on because the yeah I won't, which I cannot tell you about because of the Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norris boys. Anyway, anyway, the point is the point is that there is a whole. It's it it's basically a vehicle for um. Jeeves to assume that the reason that Worcester can't tell him something is because one of his aunts put a spell on him to not admit that he's he's a flaming homosexual and um ah. and Bertie's like, No what dash it all, Jeeves, I'm perfectly capable of saying that I like to sleep with men, <laughs> damn it. <This> <laughs> the problem I'm having is that I'm and then he tells a long story about um a fairy shoemaker that um I don't know, ran into the Raven King or whatever, because that's what the magic does when you try and um you know actually explain what's going on but yes it's very good and i enjoyed it immensely but i would then i was sort of like okay i'm now sufficiently intrigued that i might actually pick up a jeeves and worcester eventually um do you know what i want and mm. i know that the great gatsby is like this tragedy and it's all you know prescribed from the start and it could never have ended happily but i want jeeves to come and fix it that would be so funny because that's the but, same. It's the same time period, right? It's the Royal Twenties, yeah, yeah, yeah. or at least you know. I think it's, so. Yeah, it's, I think Jesus and Worcester is like late twenties, but you know, same mm. deal. Mm. Um, yeah. I want, I want Bertie while he's in New York or whatever to get invited to one of these parties, and uh, now I have to write this. Obviously, it's probably someone's already done it. To be yeah, fair, yeah, the Great Gatsby from Bertie Worcester's perspective. Can you imagine? It'll be so fucking funny. Oh my yep. gosh. Ah, yeah, amazing. And and Bertie being completely oblivious to Gatsby running drugs in the background, like <laughs> incredible. We should, I, I don't know if we put the Great Gatsby on our on our reading list. Um, I think it's vaguely. It can go on the, it's vaguely uh, can go on on the long list, ready for the next the long medium list. list. Yes, yeah. exactly. For the next short <laughs> list, our, our arcane uh, selection process for books. Yes, it, it, it's so it's many. Surprises. Um, it is so many. Ca- lists. Can we do our our fun questions for the, for the <laughs> books? Can we, can we do some more questions? Fun, fun questions. How dare you? No, I think I say I say I, I, I say I'll, I'll set fun questions. <laughs> our, and do you want to talk about them being married first, though? Oh, I did. Kind oh, of want yes, to talk yes, about yes, them yes. Being go, 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 go. And now, now that I've said this. Dear listeners, I'm going to completely forget everything that I wanted to say about them being married. Well, the thing that always strikes me is how completely Jeeves knows Worcester and is mm. like trying, like, is not going to coddle him, but will absolutely mm. step in when asked. Yeah. Well, and also, like, often when bef- he's already sorted it, like, before Bertie mm. asked, and it's always like, I, I don't know, there's something, there was something quietly romantic to me about the, the idea of Bertie just wants a quiet life. And Jeeves is constantly on the lookout for ways to make that happen. Jeeves you know? is the legs going like crazy underneath the surface of the per- the serene mm. swan, you know? Yes. 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 He's yeah, what yeah. allows them to have that life, essentially. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, there's just, there's something about that that's very... Sort of acts of service as a long language type of thing. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. There's a, there's something about that that's very appealing to me. But also there's kind of a... Oh, the, what was the moment at the end of the... Um, is that the very last book? And so there's been a bit of a running theme in this collection of... I think at one point Bertie walks in on Jeeves explaining to the new temp that um, Bertie is mentally negligible. Um, yeah, and he's very hurt. And then there's a bunch of sort of like, yeah, the convincing the psychiatrist uncle of this woman that wants to marry him that he's mad. And, and, and I so think the yeah. end of the last story is he's managed to convince... People that Bertie actually sees on a regular basis, which yeah. are like the uncle of Bingo Little, who gives him his mm. allowance, or gives Bingo his allowance, yeah. he's convinced that person to get Bertie out of a scrape that Bertie is a lunatic, is is mm. mentally deficient, is not to be trusted, is is has mm. delusions, whatever. Yeah. Which basically gives Bertie an out for having lied so often to get Bingo some money, right? Yeah. Which he's done because he has no spine. And Bertie <laughs> comes back to the flat and he's like, if I know one thing, it's that Jeeves is leaving my employment. This is unacceptable. And yeah. he gets home and everything is just so. Yeah. And he has this conversation with Jeeves where he goes, uh, it, it, he basically doesn't, it, over the course of him not saying anything and Jeeves just going, very good, sir, mm. he loses the will to be angry. Cause he's, he's, just like, like, he's like, he walks in determined to break ha- to have a dramatic breakup, basically. And then I think I found the quote in this. And then mm. through the doorway shimmered good old Jeeves in the wake of a tray full of necessary ingredients. And there was something about the mere look of the man that I immediately reconsidered breaking up with him. And I'm just like, Bertie, <laughs> Bertie! <laughs> My love. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's just like very, and like, yeah, the fact that like Bertie can read him so perfectly and they've got this like whole bit that they do about the like, 
I would like to wear the colourful socks, please. And um, <laughs> Jeeves is like, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> just like, and all of the, like, the chilliness in the domestic sphere or whatever. And um, yeah, mm. Bertie never wanting to get married. And and Jeeves being very obliging <laughs> with yeah. wanting him to not get married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, like, I think there's a couple of instances where Jeeves manages to contrive to get whatever fix he's gotten for Bertie to also get him out of being engaged to somebody he doesn't want to be engaged to. And yeah. You kind, of, you kind of get the impression that it's catching the, like, inability yes. to tell women that you don't want to marry them. Um, and you just have to come up with schemes about it instead. He has an understanding with the cook in Bertie, in Bingo's uncle's household. Oh, the one that um, Bingo's uncle ends up marrying. Yes, yes. And at the end, um, Jeeves is just like, yeah. oh my goodness, but I thought you had an understanding with her. Aren't you terribly heartbroken? And, and, and Jeeves is just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> like, like, really fair, I think fast. he says it's because he wants to marry the waitress that um, <laughs> Bingo, <laughs> the Bingo oh, yes. just lost. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I think this was also a possibly a thing that I maybe picked up from fanfic, but there's a few... The fact that it's set in the 20s... Was this particular class and the like the fact that he just wants a quiet life and there's a bit there's a bit in the one when they're in New York where the aspiring actor is trying to throw hands with the small child who says he has a, the face of a fish. Um, yes, that is described as something like a melee of arms and legs and like yeah, it, you could read it as Bertie dissociating and I do wonder if there is a little bit of this man is a, not a neurotypical was, uh, like Jeeves being like. Mm. Maybe I shall. Maybe I shall protect the this this person from the shell shock. Also, you know, it's like maybe that's yeah. why he's so he is so dedicated to the making sure Bertie well, we does don't... have a reasonably quiet life. Yeah. Do we know if Bertie was involved in the Great War? See, I don't is know. Is that the I undertone think, there? I think it's an interpretation that I've seen in fanfic. Definitely that that's mm-hmm. a and the other relationship that I have to compare it to is the Bunter Lord Peter Whimsy one from the Dorothy oh, Elsayers. Yeah. Okay. But that one is very explicitly like Bunter is Jeeves in this scenario, but Bunter was Whimsy's sergeant and oh. it's very much a like but and Bunter like very much put him back together after the war. And right. and like Whimsy I think is sometimes described as a uh, Worcester if Worcester actually had brains and only was pretending to be an idiot. Is very much ah. the vibe that you get off whimsy sometimes. Oh, um, this is the one with the woman where he's like, "Oh, will you marry me?" Oh, thought I'd just ask. Mm. Is that not where he he sits down and there's there's a woman that he mm. has this conversation with every now and then where he's just like, "Oh, w- will you will you marry me?" And she's just like, "Absolutely not." And he's just like, "Sure, yeah, get worth a shot." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that's, that way um... he can sort of say, "Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get married." <laughs> <laughs> we should do those books as well. Uh, according mm. to Wikipedia. Bertie mm. is approximately 24 when he first meets Jeeves. Mm. That sounds like he would have been too young to be involved in First World War. Uh, well, it depends what year that was. That's true. And it also doesn't mean that he wasn't, you know, greatly affected by it, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, like I said, it's it's a reading that I have seen, I think, primarily in fanfic. But I do think it's interesting, particularly... Like, even on a metatextual level, like we were talking about earlier, the fact that there are genuinely no stakes... Mm. in in these this in is these a sort books. of contemporary escapist type thing like, i don't actually know when they were written oh no i don't think i do actually let me go and have a look in pg i think House. it is 1920s yeah on it, it, that, it looks that like well reliable source that is wikipedia mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> i'm just looking through pg woodhouse's uh wikipedia page and it's got reluctant banker budding writer and then writing worcester and jeeves is mm. like sort of 08 to 15 and then I mean, so 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 Jeeves yeah. and Springtime, which is the first one, was first published in 1921, and then it was yeah. in the collection in 1923. Okay. It sounds like these could very well have been escapist literature for mm. like immediately after the Great War, and it's about the kind of people who didn't get to come home from it. Yeah, somebody has almost certainly written that dissertation is of on um, Jeeves and Worcester as post-war literature, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. I think even even if you don't even if you kind of go oh well the textual element of like this is what's happening here is mm. missing maybe or not as much as you'd like but um I do think the I mean there's something about I think a lot of the literature of that time period is like profoundly affected by both wars in the like I mean I've definitely heard the theory and I think I'm stealing this from as my whimsy takes me um which is a great 
podcast about yeah a lot of Peter Whimsy, but the the golden age of detective fiction coming so soon after uh, the World Wars yeah. or around that kind of time. Wanting to be able to fix things, like mm-hmm. it puts it in a neat little box. You know, it's a puzzle to solve. It there will be justice. It makes this incomprehensible tragedy comprehensible on a it brings it down to a, like an individual level in a way that's like solvable yeah yeah i will say like maybe. um i've been i've been getting a lot out of reading some detective novels recently by mm. um ton of french amazing books i don't think we'd do them for the podcast mm. um but like they are very good at if you are dealing with something big and complicated in your personal life they're mm. good at sort of they're cathartic for that reason yeah um in that here is something awful happening and here is it getting resolved whether or not that's in a neat little bow or slightly more ambiguous or whatever Mm. um yeah so i can see why both that and this kind of story would have been like would have been written in that time period yeah and i mean not to get on my favorite hobby horse about the whole th white the whole um what's it called when it's not just the first one the the once and future king that bugger um Mm. like the whole thesis of that of those books, at least as a series, I think Sword in the Stone may have been published separately originally, but is it's basically using Arthur as a test case for how do we make humans stop doing war? Mm. You know? And I think that's very, like, telling. But anyway, yeah. Lottie was right, we should ask some silly questions now. Yes, we should. <laughs> and this I actually had, well I had a variant on Mansplain Manipulate wa- Male Wife for you guys. Ooh, I do think we okay. should do classic, but we should also do Mansplain, manipulate male wife for all of the clothes that um, Jeeves throws out. Yes, because there so were got three. The, the scarlet in this, cummerbund, the purple socks, and the jazz spats. I'm going to look up what spats actually are. I think they're <laughs> shoes, right? And the thing about jazz spats, calling them jazz, yeah, they're. Oh my god. <laughs> Please describe, um, describe, describe. I don't want to look it up. I just want to hear the okay, description. Okay, so the first ones that came up were knee high boots. Okay. But I think, I think what Bertie would more likely have been referring to are something more like brogues, maybe sort of ankle height brogues rather than the mm. low cut ones. Okay. So something more like something more like cut above the ankle. And then okay. the ones I'm looking at are in black and white and like neutral tones. Mm. And then if I look up Old Etonian colours, <laughs> um, what comes up? I should know this. I'm posh. I should know this, but I'm not posh enough. Um, I mean, it's not like you didn't I went go to, to private Eaton, school, so. not public school. Yeah, but you didn't, you didn't go to Eton, so like, I feel I thought it's a fair, not like fun fact that you wouldn't know mm. this. The old Etonian colours are like black and blue. Like that's perfectly fine. That's 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 not that garish. Oh, maybe they had the yellow in there as well. <laughs> oh, oh no, there's, I think there's the a other very the other reading I've okay. seen of that, and I think it's from that same fic, is that the reason that Jeeves is so strict about the wardrobe is that he's worried about. Worcester dressing too flamboyant and getting in trouble because we are not that uh, far off the trial yes. of Oscar Wilde. Uh, there's a bunch of bow ties here. I've got one. I've googled old Etonian colours and uh, garish is is putting it lightly. So obviously <laughs> within context, you you can tell that these um mm. this because these, old these money spats. can't buy you taste. No, yeah, you can tell that <laughs> they run out of colours. Good. They run out of colours when they start like picking the school <laughs> colours. Yeah. Like let's let's pick the most garish. Or the person picking them was colour blind. Um, potentially potentially i mean potentially potentially but they're ugly <laughs> so sorry right so um, we've got we've got the garish shoes we've got the garish cummerbund and we've got the honestly the purple socks i'm going to make for myself and nobody can stop me yeah. um and here's the thing it's not 1920s and i'm not Betty worcester so i can say i'm gay so i can wear the purple socks are, are we trying to say which one we we we, we like the least or oh, i think we're trying to say which best in it embodies man's flame manipulate male life Hear me out. Like, I feel mm. Cumberbund is mansplain. Intriguing. Yeah. I think, I think the purple socks are male wife. They're the least... They're the ones you could, you, you could potentially hide, right? Mm. They're the least uh, outrageous. Yeah. But that, that leaves us with the garish jazz spats as manipulate, which... Can you manipulate anybody with jazz spats? This is the... I mean, you can confuse people because I swear there was like a saying that you can tell, oh, like tell a bird with dangerous everything plumage. about a person by their <laughs> shoes. And if you wear like the weird shoes, then it's going to throw over their... You'll, you'll, you'll oh, yeah, throw yeah. them off their rhythm. It's, it's a carefully songs. calculated con artistry. Yeah. Mm, mm. I could see them turning up as a crucial bit of a leverage con, for example. <laughs> I've just had a terrible thought and Ro is probably going to cut this, but there is absolutely a fanfic in the premise that... 
Bertie keeps picking terrible clothes that um, Jeeves will hate, specifically to provoke a angry, horny response. <laughs> that fic exists, I'm sure, somewhere. There is it definitely does. a like. I'm I need sure to, I need to be punished do. for my terrible um, wardrobe choices. Um, yeah. If someone knows about the there. existence of that fic, email it to us at teachmapping. <laughs> 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 for us because the thing is that as soon as we've hit stop on recording this podcast we'll forget that we ever said that and then we'll come back to our email yeah we're like why is there so much horny jeeves and worcester fanfic yeah. in our inbox oh um, my gosh and that will be a nice little you know treat mystery puzzle for us in the future so if you'd like yeah, to enrich yeah. us <laughs> introduce some enrichment into our enclosure send us horny exactly. fanfic today the, the, uh, the pump the meat pumpkin <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with the not the not the fanfic necessarily, but the cummerbund uh-huh. being mansplain no, I, and the yeah, socks yeah, being yeah. male wife and the jazz bats being manipulate. Because I think mm. if nothing else, like... they're going to manipulate your eyes downwards to look at them. That's yeah, true. exactly. That's true. Do you know what? Hear me out. I have a theory about the cummerbund. Okay, Go for it. This, the mansplaining is like the thing is Bertie's convinced that the cummerbund is reasonable. You could be convinced mm. that the cummerbund is reasonable. I think, yes. maybe, possibly. It doesn't sound that bad to is me. absolutely not. Right? Yeah. The cummerbund tricks you into thinking, it's like, no, look, I'm a perfectly reasonable wardrobe item, but actually Jeeves is right. And it's a fiend mm-hmm. in silk form and should not be trusted Oh, you know what allowed. I should do? I'm going to Google the Old Etonian jazz spats and see if they were rendered in the in the adaptation. Adaptation, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, only, only in black and white. Good God. Yeah, but Hugh Laurie did go to Eton, so I feel that... Really? I'm pretty sure he went to Eton. Oh, wow. I knew he was... He was um, Was he Footlights? Fry and Laurie yes. were Footlights, they right? Both they were, were, yes. They both were, yeah, along with um, Emma Thompson. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Mm-hmm. But yes, so like the cummerbund, you could maybe convince someone. You could maybe uh, potentially gaslight someone into thinking that it was a recent <laughs> piece of clothing. I've just had the thought, which is the jumper that I'm knitting right now with mm. my own two hands is something that Jeeves would want to burn. And I don't know how I feel about that because it definitely feel, makes me worse. Do you know what? On the one hand, I want Jeeves to approve of me. There's something I, there, and, and this is another way in which I find Bertie Worcester deeply relatable is I too would want Jeeves to approve of me and my life choices. Yeah. However, I do think that you could go quite happily go through life with a guiding principle of... Um, would this outfit make Jeeves extremely angry and be very, very happy with your aesthetic choices? Like, I feel like You've got that's to a... wear at least one item. Like, what, the Coco Chanel thing of, like, you know, she was a Nazi, by the way, but um, and therefore I don't care about this advice at all, but the advice mm. of being, like, before you leave the door, take at least one accessory off because mm. you've probably overdone it and less is more or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 but the, the rule I'm thinking of is you have to be wearing at least one item that Jeeves would want to burn. Yes, I like that. I think that's... Because this is how you have fun in life right yeah regardless Again, enrichment of where in you're the going. enclosure yeah 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 enrichment in in the enclosure of life mm. mm-hmm. well, see the thing is about doing man's play manipulate male wife for actual characters is that does anybody does anybody actually achieve male wife in this because no. bertie spends the whole thing desperately trying not to become male wife bingo, not that I think bingo he'd be wants to be a male wife so bad <laughs> yeah, he wants to do nothing. He, every time Jeeves is like, maybe you could consider like getting a job. Not Jeeves. Worcester mm. is like, you could consider getting a job to earn mm. money, and then you wouldn't be dependent on your uncle. And Bingo's like, what me? Get a job? <laughs> how, so, how beneath me? I can't get a job. I guess technically that well, does kind more of... like more like I don't have the temperament for it. You know. Mm. But that's a, that's such a like a privileged position to say. Like, oh, I don't yeah, have the absolutely, temperament for a job. Why me? It is a job. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, and I don't think the text is shying away from mm. that. But he is. Is he or is he not? I can't remember whether the uncle does decide to give them money in the end. But if he doesn't, like, Bingo is being supported by the writing career of his wife. So he is technically, in some ways, potentially. I don't know. I think he's a kept man more than a male wife. Well, because they actually do get married. He marries the author. Mm. They get married at a courthouse. Yeah. But And the way that Jeeves resolves the situation is by putting all of the blame for the deception that had happened previously mm. on Worcester and then saying that he is insane. Yeah. So actually, I wonder if Bingo, at the end of this series of short stories, is happily married to mm. the person who, I, I forget the name of the waitress, but who is actually Rosie M. Banks and has written all these novels. Mm. So yeah, I mean, and she she has a job. She has two jobs. She works as a waitress yeah. and she is a She works as a waitress to like get um, <laughs> to people research, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's a lot of fun, yeah. 
So yeah, perhaps Bingo is the male wife. Mm. <laughs> a controversial position. <laughs> who, who do you want to fight? Because I'd say those two twins, because they really annoyed me. I think the twins. Mm. Also, the child in the theatre episode. Although, to be fair, he was mostly put up to being a little dick by Jeeves. So That is true. But, see, I don't know, I think Steggles. I think... Oh, Steggles. Uh, we haven't like, even talked about him. A little bit on Bertie's behalf. Throws a, th- throws a spanner in the works of Bingo's plans for matrimony like a couple of times. And, and also, he's just like, a bit mean about it. He's just yeah, mean. Yeah, he's kind of a dick about it. And it's also very like, all of it, like is he's sort of running the books on all the stupid bets that they make while they're in Twing. And then he goes and like fixes the race. Yeah. Or the, you know, fixes the parson thing or um, puts a beetle down somebody's shirt so they can't run in the race. I don't really... The- I don't remember how the logic of that went. But it's not very nice. I think, not no, very nice not really. I think, I think it was... I a bit my eyes his... glazed over for the village fake bits. I, um, I've got to say, there was once we they were started talking about betting odds, I'm not... I can't... It's, no, it's too close no. to economics. My brain can't handle it. It just explodes and dies. Here's the thing. Take a leaf out of the book of Bertie, Bertie Worcester and just don't pay attention to any of it and it'll be fine. Yeah, he does basically... I mean, he, you know, he seems kind of invested in it occasionally, but it's much more like... Well, I can afford to put some money in it, so I'm going to put some money in it. But I'm not. Yeah. He's not. He's not particularly invested. Um, yes. In a like, it doesn't matter to him particularly in the end. Mm-hmm. Who wins? Um, yeah. What other fun questions do we have? Uh, uh, who gets the F bomb? I think. <laughs> well, I think is, Jeeves would be very funny, but it'd be also so out of character. Like he wouldn't, but also he should get to. Yeah. You know. Although I tell you what, actually, if I'd come home and like my supposed best friend who keeps ruining my life with his terrible marriage schemes and won't shut up about how he's desperately in love with various people. Girl of the week. Yeah. Um, And then acts acts really offended when you remind him that he was in love with a different girl like yesterday. Um, Yeah. If I came home to find him like asleep in my bed and then insisting that I was such a good pal that I would go sleep on the sofa, you'd get at least one F-bomb, if not several out of me for that. Mm. Um... Mm. There would be, there would possibly be screaming and flailing and throwing of things. Like, this is some dick behaviour. Also, I do, I do kind of think it would be really funny if the communists, instead of, instead of Jeeves being like, seeing the horrible beard or whatever and having a like, a slightly faint moment, if he just went, the <laughs> f*** is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that just would be quiet, quietly, good f***ing God. Like, just yeah. the, the, there's a wardrobe crime so egregious that he has to just be like, Sir, the f- <laughs> <laughs> no, just he looks. At, he looks at Worcester and goes, "I think the f- not." <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, yeah, I think it has to be Jeeves because I think he would deploy it to greatest effect. I think that is true. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I feel like there's quite a high cat rating on this. Not only yeah. are there actual cats, but the shenanigans and they, and are they contribute endless. Chaos and mayhem. Yes, they do. They just, do. There is just crime and mischief. And they get to eat fish. They do. Mm. And like all of the stories are like, Cat wants to do cat things like lounge around and eat nice things and do nothing. And then shenanigans happen. Yeah. There are so many shenanigans. Like, there, there are there are a lot of shenanigans. I, I don't know. I, I feel it's not as high as Tamarare. I, 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 I would not give it a 10. I would not give it a I'd 10. I'd give it an 8 though. Uh, yeah. Eight or maybe a nine. I think I'm. I was leaning towards a nine. The thing, the thing that Worcester does frequently, where he goes to G's and he gives this forlorn little sign. He goes, "Oh, I'm in the soup." You know, hmm. the the tiny like put upon noises that an animal will will do every now and mm. then. Like you know, Gothmog will be sleeping yeah. on my bed and she'll she'll move and she'll make the most like long suffering sign. I'm just like, oh, I'm so sorry. Is your life very difficult? Is it? Yeah, the the whole um, whenever Wookie makes a world weary sign, I'm like, oh, it's such a hard I life was being of you, Wookie being, also, yeah. being being waited on hand and foot, having yeah. people follow you around and pet you and feed you and um, show you love and attention whenever you so much as sniff in their general direction. Such a hard life, and it, yeah. that is oh, very so much sad, the life course. that Bertie Wooster is yeah. living. So, also, so like the suits saying... are all of his own making, which is a very pet. Yeah, I would go up to a nine on this. On so we're so saying nine. nine. I'm going to write yeah. this down because I feel this needs to like be. <laughs> I'm going to start putting it on the bottom of the reference post in Thank big you. letters yeah, to put the cat rating. I want a page where we just have like cat rating <laughs> of all the, <laughs> the books ultimate and rankings. Yeah, and then people can be can, can go and have a look and sort them by cat rating. Um, mm-hmm. Excellent. I want to know what else you guys have been reading. Lots of Discworld. Nice. Excellent. Lots and lots of Discworld. Very I'm... very good. Good for the soul. 
catching up on not having read this goal before which is a very good time because it helps with house renovations because i can just put my headphones on listen to the i'm listening to the penguin versions on audible um, oh, nice. and they're, they're 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 a good time but also the free one the uh, say the free ones the ones by nigel planer are on my library app so if everyone's like mm. oh we've got a library app yeah there's a library app they're on there it's just there's a while there's a bit of a wait time and i get credits so i was like okay i'll use them to get this one and listen to other books but yeah they're a good yeah. time it's a fun nice, time. Nice, nice, nice. I've been reading um, the Dublin Murder Squad series by Tana French, and I'd read mm. the first one, which is called In the Woods, uh, before Christmas, I think. So I've been yeah. lent them by some friends of ours, and they basically said to me, look, these are, these are the kind of books where you pick them up and you do not put them down until you have finished reading them. Mm. And that has basically happened every single time, except that one I read over the course of the week while I was doing other things. Yeah. And oh my gosh, they're so, so good. Each of them is like... Each of them is basically a character piece about the main character um, nice. and they're with a different main character in each novel. So the first one is about a detective who has a childhood trauma and then ends up going back to the same town where he had mm. this childhood trauma to work on a seemingly unrelated case. And then the yeah. second one is about his partner on the squad and mm. what she does after that case. And then the third one is about a secondary character from that book and so mm. on. Yeah. Um, and so you get some character crossover, but each one is told in first person from the perspective of a different person. And it's about okay. a, a case or an, a series of events that is particularly resonant with them and for what reasons. Um, mm. Really, really good. There's some like gross stuff in there because they're murder histories and um, mm. the sort of sort of traumatizing stuff or whatever. Yeah. But uh, really, really, really good books. Um, and I've got, I think, three more, three or four more to read in the oh, series. Nice. And I'm sure I'll go through them very very quickly as soon as i pick one up i will not put it down essentially yeah. um yeah the other night i sort of started reading one at nine in the evening being like i'll just oh. read a little bit before bed oh, and of course mistake. i didn't i went to bed at like half midnight having finished it <laughs> so i mean that's a good book right there that is it a good is book it was right so there. good um, really evocative stuff and really really sort of i love the way that she writes um yeah. so that's what i've been reading I haven't been I haven't been reading very much, admittedly. I have I am picking away at Britain After Rome by Robin Fleming, which I am very much enjoying. Um mm-hmm. and I may or may not and this is entirely the fault of the people I follow on Tumblr because I have resolutely not cared about the Silmarillion for my entire adult life. <laughs> oh boy. But they got me in the fanfic. <laughs> they got me in the fanfic and now I'm like, what if I That's read the Silmarillion you, though? And it's like, No I don't know. Well want that's to why you read Tamarare, right? Maybe. Shush. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that is why I read to read. It's why I was excited to read Jeeves and Worcester. This is a whole, this is a theme. You can see why I'm scared, right? You can see why I'm yes. like, what if I actually read the Silmarillion? Oh God, this might actually happen to me. Like, well, we have at least two hard copies in the house, I'm pretty I know. sure. So. I know, we do. That's the kind of nerd. We have like a folio edition, I'm pretty sure. In. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I think a friend know, of ours gave it to us I'm going to fortify present. my room with my multiple copies of Beowulf to protect me. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Maybe that will save me. Although Mark did point out that the best cure for wanting to read The Silmarillion is trying to read The Silmarillion because that will fix it. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> that does sound quite plausible. <laughs> Do you know what happened to me with The Silmarillion? I took what a happened? couple of to get into it. And then once mm-hmm. I got into it, I did not stop until I put it down. See, so. this is the thing that I'm afraid of because now I have an emotional attachment to various characters uh-huh. within it. It'll happen. It'll so, happen. like, that's the thing that, like, you need to get past the dry stuff, I think, is to be invested yes. in that. So, yeah, I'm in danger. Chuckles at the back of the bus, you know. Yes. <laughs> no, it'll um, be fine. I, Excellent. I, it'll be, so, it'll be what good are we? what are we doing for next time? What are we doing next time? Oh, oh, we're doing Howl's Moving Castle, which <gasps> I am yes, 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 so, so exciting, psyched to discuss for nine God, million it's different so reasons. So funny! We're gonna have such a good I time. I can recommend the audio book. Uh, it's a brilliant narration, and I can't remember who narrate. Uh, I'm gonna go and find it now because the, the I mean, I'll dig it up for it. the reference post. If uh, okay, yeah, and yeah, we'll put it on the reference post. But it's it's a brilliant, brilliant um, narration, and really, really enjoyable to listen to. So definitely recommend on Audible or on like physical copy, or get it from your local library, etc. Buy from a friend, get a second hand copy. They're, often, they're quite often in charity shops. I've had quite good luck yeah. picking up Diana Wynne Jones's in charity shops. 
See, I went round a bunch of charity shops last week, could not find it. So I'm going to oh, be buying wild. an ebook, I think. But um, it, it, it's a good, yeah. it's a good book. It's 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 enjoyable. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this episode, um, please consider giving us a like review on your podcast platform. It means the world to us when when they come through because we do get notified, and it is like a good time on our chat when it happens. <laughs> and you can also send us an email at teachermycatterie@gmail.com or via our website. And on our website, we've got a list of every single episode that exists um, with links to listen on all the major platforms. So if you want to go, if you enjoy this episode, want to go and listen to some old ones, go and check that out. Um, But yeah, say hello, send us a message and recommend us some books to read. Big virtual hugs and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.